House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi on Trump's China tariffs The United States must take strong, smart and strategic action against China's brazenly unfair trade policies. The Trump administration must do much more to fight for American workers and products. Sorry, she Nancy won't save you if her party wins back the House of Representatives on Tuesday. Photo by Mark Wilson, Getty Images, if Beijing thinks that a house flip on Tuesday is good news for them in this trade war with Trump, they are in for a rude awakening. Sorry China, the Democrats won't save you. First off, the trade war, or trade friction as the Chinese like to call it, is mainly an executive decision. That means that all of these tariffs have been under the purview of the executive branch of government. That's Trump, but if he did need Congress to help him out with anything he could count on bipartisan support. Senator Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is for tariffs. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi is on board with Schumer. If the Democrats win the House on Tuesday, she may become the majority leader and will set the tone for the party. Here is what Pelosi thinks about China tariffs. The report of the USTR investigation on China's intellectual property theft is a good first step but far more is need to confront the full range of China's bad behavior, Beijing's regulatory barriers, localization requirements, labor abuses, anti-competitive made in China 2025 policy and many other unfair trade practices require a full and comprehensive response. The tariffs announced today should be used as a leverage point to negotiate more fair and open trade for U.S products in China. This from a woman whose district in the state of California has seen a marked increase in trade with China. She both knows the economic benefit of China, and knows of the impact China trade has had on blue-collar labor, let alone on the intellectual property often created in the Bay Area she represents. It's true that governors and business representatives like doing business with China, but Washington is another animal with quite a different mindset. Take a look at some of the centrist Democrats that are likely to beat Republicans for a House seat tomorrow. New York 22nd District Congressional Candidate Anthony Brindisi agrees with Trump on trade. As a local government official in his New York upstate town, Brindisi came out against a state-funded purchase of Chinese-made beer fermentation tanks that could have been made in America. If he's done that locally, why would he change his tune in Washington? He'll still be representing the same town. Democratic congressional candidate Dan McCready of North Carolina is in a toss-up race on Tuesday. If he wins, he supports a better trade deal with China. AP photo, Chuck Burton, file, in toss-up districts, Democrats like Ronald DeNicola of Pennsylvania's 16th Congressional District likes Trump cracking down on the Chinese, Dan McCready of North Carolina doesn't like the China trade war, but says the U.S. Definitely needs a better trade deal with China, Xochitl Torres Small of Nevada's 2nd Congressional District says, we need to counter the unfair trade practices from China. This should be done, so that the interests of entrepreneurs, farmers, blue-collar workers, and other stakeholders are all represented. I'll fight for fair trade policies that help New Mexican farmers, ranchers, businesses, and workers. Xochitl Torres Small, a Democratic candidate for Congress in New Mexico says China's trade practices are unfair. AP Photo, Russell Contreras, in most agribusiness-dependent districts where Democrats stand a chance of beating their Republican challenger, candidates are all against tariffs. China has retaliated against U.S. tariffs by imposing extra duties on U.S. soybeans and other farm products. Candidates from Minnesota, Alaska, North Dakota, Kansas and Montana are not on board with Trump's tariffs, but considering Democratic Party leadership is in favor of tariffs, the farm districts will either get in line or be a minority vote in Congress should the issue ever come up in Congress in the first place. Many of these districts are Republican districts anyway and farmers that I've spoken to over the last few months all said they would vote Republican, regardless of agribusiness tariffs. There is a cross-party consensus now on China. It goes away if China changes some of the rules of its game.
If Trump ever did put tariffs up for a vote to Congress, the Chinese leadership would be wise to know that the smooth holly tariff act is still on the books. That would be worse than Trump, who can remove tariffs tomorrow if he wanted without requiring a vote. To differentiate from Trump, the Democrats will just use buzzwords like fair trade. But the end game will be the same, enforcing and exporting democratic capitalist values on the Chinese government. A house flip will change Washington's opinion on China. Anthony Brindisi, Democratic candidate for New York's 22nd Congressional District came out against a Chinese manufacturer in 2017. Photo by Tom Williams, CQ Roll Call. Moreover, so long as Robert Lighthizer and Peter Navarro are coordinating this, China should expect continued trade frictions. Lighthizer is Trump's super genius on trade and knows how to fuse the new consensus on China. Navarro is the buzzsaw, Trump's attack dog who is willing to play the role of bad cop. Even if they were to step down, there are others in Trump's America First school that could pick up the slack. The anti-tariff free trader types, like Goldman Sachs alum Gary Cohn, are all gone. Lastly, the trade dispute can be seen as only part of Washington's new foreign policy on China. As China rises to prominence in Asia, once a dollar a day part of the world dominated by the Japanese economy, an economy with no military, the usual American foreign policy of hegemony and militarism have found a new target. The South China Sea will be a new wedge issue for Washington and Beijing to rework alliances in Asia. To the American voter, China is more easily understood as an economic rival. They are easily demonized as job killers and intellectual property thieves. To the long-term thinkers in the American foreign policy establishment, China threatens U.S. Military hegemony in the Pacific Ocean and Southeast Asia in particular. Beijing should expect more tension on this front, especially from the right flank of the Republican Party. A Democratic presidency might give up on this but a permanent bureaucracy in the Departments of State, Defense, the Pentagon and in the intelligence apparatus will not. China can take that to the bank. U.S. Trade Rep. Robert Lighthizer is Trump's super genius on trade. Photo by Jim Watson, AFP, writing in the South China Morning Post on Friday, David Shambaugh, director of the China Policy Program at George Washington University said, absent a substantial reversal of Chinese policies and actions in a far more liberal direction domestically and more restrained direction externally, the new American hard line on China can be expected to endure indefinitely. The toughened policies of the Trump administration have congressional backing. They want to push back against China on a broad range of issues. The new 116th Congress that gets elected tomorrow could get even tougher on China. Xi Jinping should hope that all of the ingredients of a trade war stay in Trump's kitchen. Too many chefs will definitely spoil China's soup.